Hello, my name is Nils O'Donoghue. I'm one of the partners here at Chadwick Lawrence. I work in our regulatory team uh, alongside my colleague Nick Worsnop. And I just want today uh, to update you on some data protection issues. Um, one of the um, areas of law that we do uh, an awful lot of here um, within the regulatory team at Chadwick Lawrence uh, is advising businesses uh, on how to comply um, with the data protection regulations. Um, it does seem like quite a long time uh, since these regulations were brought in. Uh, they were brought in back in May 2018 and there was a big flurry of activity uh, for businesses to get ready. However, since then, we've acted for many businesses getting them up to speed um, on the data protection regulations and we also act for individuals who are looking to seek compensation uh, from their employer, their former employer or even as a customer um, for data protection breaches. These are more common um, than you might think and quite a lot um, of these individuals are recovering quite substantial uh, compensation because employers unfortunately um, have not got uh, the paperwork to demonstrate their data protection measures and um, which is leaving them vulnerable um, to claims from individuals when a data breach uh, inevitably happens as it does uh, in most businesses. I want to talk about a piece of legislation um, which is uh, shorthand known as PECA. Uh, I want to pick up on a uh, case last year um, that we put an article out on um, relating to PECA uh, and a firm in Norfolk uh, who unfortunately found themselves uh, in the firing line uh, from the ICO. Uh, they were fined by the Information Commissioner for um, what they called a serious breach of the Privacy Electronic Communications uh, Regulations 2003, which as I say, um, more easily known uh, as PECA. Uh, what this firm was doing was sending out uh, unsolicited uh, emails uh, selling their uh, products. Um, the ICO found that the company had committed an infringement um, by sending these unsolicited communications uh, and were directly uh, marketing uh, to individual customers. The ICO also took into account the fact that this company was trying to sell um, face masks um, during the height of the pandemic, um, which it believed to be an aggravating factor, uh, um, which made the fine um, more serious than perhaps uh, it would have been. The ICO felt that this company was trying to take advantage of people um, during uh, the pandemic. Um, the PECA regulations and also the Data Protection Act 2018 um, define direct marketing as communication by whatever means of advertising material which is directed um, to particular individuals. It's therefore important that as a business you work out are you directly uh, marketing uh, to individuals. And this particular case was brought to the ICO's um, attention by uh, a particular member of the public who had been sent these spam messages uh, advertising face masks for sale. He believed um, that they had obtained uh, his details from a single eBay account um, when he purchased, when he purchased sorry, uh, a different item. He didn't consent uh, to receiving the emails um, for the purpose uh, of direct marketing and he couldn't uh, have done so um, through eBay was the ICO's um, finding. He also claimed that the unsubscribe link um, that was provided um, on these emails to opt out um, of receiving direct marketing uh, didn't work. The company, um, in terms of their counter arguments, argued that, that that they'd obtained um, their database list from a number of sources, but they didn't have evidence of actually um, receiving any consent uh, from these customers, and they believed that MailChimp um, dealt with the issue of consent. Uh, this was deemed uh, not to be uh, sufficient, um, and direct marketing is only uh, permitted uh, in circumstances where an individual has obtained the email contact details in the course of a previous sale or negotiation uh, for a product or service, or um, where consent uh, is given. This means that if you are directly marketing as a business to individual customers, it's important that you do a number of things. Um, can you say that you've obtained uh, the email contact details of where you are marketing um, to individuals um, through a previous sale or negotiation for product or service? Is the marketing for a similar product or service? And is the individual given um, a simple means of opting out of receiving such emails um, known as a soft opt-in? In short, unless you receive um, consent uh, from the recipient or have previously had dealings with them for similar products or services, you will be in breach of PECA um, if you are sending such marketing emails directly um, to individual uh, customers. 
Uh, the fine that can be imposed by the ICO is up to £500,000. In this particular case, um, the company in Norfolk who was selling face masks, um, it was limited to £10,000, which was due to their financial circumstances. Um, it is really important that you're aware, um, if you are marketing, of these particular regulations, of the pitfalls, and that you have um, your ducks in a row, so to speak, to ensure that if you are marketing to individuals, you're not caught out by these regulations and that you have done um, the things that I've mentioned in this Monday morning dispatch email. I hope this has been helpful. This is a really uh, complex and difficult area of law uh, for anyone to get their heads around. So if you do market to individuals and would like help um, with assessing whether you are compliant uh, with the current regulations, please do let myself or my colleague Nicholas Worsnot know. Thank you.